Welcome to Testimony Arena. We bring you excerpts from edifying spiritual contents from various Christian authors and speakers. Today, Apostle Michael Arakpo draws our attention to investments that last beyond time. We hope this blesses your heart. The question is when you leave, who, what will you be remembered for? There's no house you build that will last for more than 60 years. The world is moving too fast for your house to be relevant for 60 years. There's no car you buy that will be relevant for more than 10 years. There's no money you have in any account that can exist beyond two generations. And so the question is when you leave, what will you find about you? The only thing that can live with about you forever are the water things you pick from the presence of God. Because everybody who goes there carries something. Some goes there, they carry favor. Some go there, they carry wisdom. Some go there, they carry power. And so the things they established because they went to the immortal realms, they become immortal forever on the face of the earth. And so a man who has not journeyed in intimacy with God, he's already forgotten. He's just using money to sustain his influence. Some people are struggling so hard to be relevant while they are yet alive. Some men have died and they cannot be forgotten because of where they went to and the things they taught. Do you think you call your child David because you love the name David? No. You don't love David. That name has no meaning to you. It is because of who bore it and who he became in God. And so when you call your son David, you are actually reminiscing on the immortality of a man who has walked with the Spirit. So men become eternally relevant because they walk with the Spirit. This is a man who wandered around with women, but suddenly he saw a Spirit and he started walking with that Spirit. And forever and ever, generations to come will be honored to name themselves after his order because he has seen something that is eternal. Abraham was in the hall of the Chaldees until he encountered that Spirit. And when he met that Spirit, forever and ever, you and I became the children of Abraham. Somebody may be making one million a month, 10 million a month, 20 million a month, and he said, I am doing well. And then they look at you from Zion, they say, you've never come here. How come? How come we've never seen you? If we don't see you and you don't come here, how can you now attach purpose to the money you have? The money you have will now become the basis of your condemnation. Because when you go to where they whisper to the souls of men, they will tell you, it is not about the money, it's about the purpose of that money. And you can never have an understanding of that purpose with your brain. It will be shown to you. And so the first true benefit of prayer is that in prayer, men are invited to walk with God. This is why the patriarchs of old exalted prayer. Because they knew that outside of God, they were nothing. And because they now know God forever and ever, their, their names will never be forgotten. Did you not read about Elijah? Elijah had to be invited to the earth four times. God said, no, you, are, you have known the glory too much for us to let you go. So you will not die. We will preserve you for another generation. They said the spirit of Elijah came back. And after the spirit of Elijah came back, the two witnesses will still come back. A man becomes immortal like God because he has walked too close with God for a world to forget him. Intimacy is what provides for you the benefits of immortality. No matter the money you have, no matter the position you occupy, you will be forgotten unless you touch something that comes from the spirit that is eternal. And so the first benefit of prayer is intimacy. Men of old were wise. They gave their all to prayer. Daniel was in Babylon. The king said nobody should pray to any other god. He was willing to risk his position and to risk his freedom for prayer. Because outside of intimacy, he has no freedom in the first place. And in Daniel 6, the Bible said three times. So if you are praying three times when they gave a law that nobody should pray, how many times do you pray when there is no law? And he said three times the guy prayed facing Jerusalem. He was not afraid to be arrested. And when they arrested him, he didn't apologize. I'd rather be nothing with prayer than to be everything outside of prayer. Because with prayer, I have God. Outside of prayer, I have nothing. These men knew these things and they were willing to give their lives for it. And so the first benefit of prayer is in work with God. And the reason is simple. Your work with God makes you immortal. Every other thing you touch will ebb away with time. But the things you pick from the realm of God, they will outlive you.